Uh, Miss Hathaway, would you please ask Mr. Neese if she'd allow me to... Reflect on the beloved TV series, The Beverly Hillbillies, which still touches the hearts of many. Debuting in 1962, this comedy brought stardom to its cast, garnering seven Emmy nominations during its run. Sadly, time has passed, taking away the opportunity to see these cherished actors again, as they have left us due to age and illness. This exploration delves into their unfortunate fates. Don't miss this touching tribute. Max Beer Jr., who played Jethro, was the last surviving main cast member before his passing in 2018. Buddy Epson, known as Jed Clampett, lived until 23. Irene Ryan died in 1973, after suffering a stroke. Donna Douglas passed away in 2015, while Ray Teal left us in 1976. Nancy Culp, playing Miss Jane Hathaway, also sadly passed away in 1991. Their memories live on through reruns and warm recollections of this classic program. Well, any trapping will have to be up to you, Granny. I wouldn't know what to do except when I held a shotgun on... Reflecting on the career of Buddy Epson, one cannot overlook his prominent role in the popular TV series, The Beverly Hillbillies. As Jed Clampett, Epson embodied the quintessential patriarch of a fish-out-of-water family that struck oil and moved to Beverly Hills. His performance was both authentic and engaging, making the show a hit among viewers. Before becoming a household name with the Beverly Hillbillies, Epson started his career as a dancer, performing in Broadway Melody of 1936, and sharing the spotlight with Shirley Temple in Captain January. However, fate had other plans for him when he was offered the part of the Scarecrow in The Wizard of Oz, which eventually changed to The Tin Man. Unfortunately, his health suffered due to the aluminum dust in his makeup, forcing him to withdraw from the film. Epson's adaptability allowed him to take on various roles throughout his career. He acted alongside Maureen O'Hara and they met in Argentina, and partnered with June Havoc in Sing Your Worries Away. In Breakfast at Tiffany's, he played Doc Golightly, Audrey Hepburn's much older husband. Prior to gaining stardom with the Beverly Hillbillies, Epson enjoyed early television success, playing Davy Crockett's sidekick, George Russell, in Walt Disney's Davy Crockett miniseries. These experiences paved the way for his future achievements and solidified his standing as a cherished entertainer. As the Beverly Hillbillies ended its run, Epson found continued success in another TV series, Barnaby Jones, demonstrating his wide range as an actor. Ultimately, after gracing audiences with his presence for over seven decades, Epson decided to retire from acting in 1999. Choosing to live a quieter life in California, he embraced the tranquility of the region stepping away from the demanding nature of the entertainment business. On July 6, 2003, Buddy Ebsen passed away at the remarkable age of 95. The news saddened many in the industry who paid tribute to the legendary performer. With a career spanning numerous genres and formats, Ebsen left behind a rich collection of memorable performances, inspiring countless aspiring actors along the way. His impact transcended eras, securing his place in the annals of Hollywood history. <laughs> Granny, I presume, is the cook. Yes, ma'am, but she ain't too happy about it right now. Donna Douglas is best remembered for her starring role as Ellie Mae Clampett in the beloved TV series The Beverly Hillbillies, which aired from 1962 to 1971. As the kind-hearted and unsophisticated daughter of the Clampett family, Douglas won over audiences with her authentic portrayal of a country girl trying to navigate the posh world of Beverly Hills. Her performance played a significant part in the show's massive popularity. After saying goodbye to acting, Douglas tried her hand at various other fields. She obtained a license to sell real estate and proved herself to be a savvy entrepreneur, utilizing her skills beyond the entertainment industry. Yet, her love for performing never wavered. She went on to pursue a career as a gospel singer, using her powerful vocals to spread inspiration and hope. Douglas continued to connect with people through public speaking engagements, where she discussed her life experiences and provided valuable insights to attentive listeners. Her warm personality and sincerity made her a favorite among event organizers and audience members alike. As if being a successful actress, realtor, and musician wasn't enough, Douglas added published author to her list of accomplishments. Writing both adult and children's literature, she displayed her gift for storytelling and touched the lives of countless readers. Throughout her post-Hillbillies career, Douglas always took the time to maintain relationships with her loyal supporters, responding personally to fan letters even during hectic periods. Cherishing her personal connections, she often enjoyed spending quality time with family and close friends, engaging in heartfelt conversations, and building lifelong memories. 
Tragically, in early 2015, Donna Douglas passed away after battling pancreatic cancer. At the age of 82, she left behind a rich tapestry of work in multiple disciplines and remains an inspiring figure to millions. Laid to rest in Louisiana, her memory continues to live on in the hearts of everyone fortunate enough to have experienced her talents firsthand. Well, I've seen them here all ages. Well, I'm afraid that years alone do not turn a boy into a man. Born on October 17, 1902, Irene Ryan demonstrated her acting and comedy skills across various platforms, from vaudeville and radio to film and Broadway. However, it was her iconic portrayal of Daisy May Granny Moses in the beloved TV series The Beverly Hillbillies that truly cemented her place in entertainment history. Her chemistry with co-star Buddy Epson, who played Jed Clampett, contributed significantly to the show's success. Nominated twice for an Emmy Award for her exceptional performance in 1963 and 1964, Ryan proved her impeccable comedic timing and charismatic presence. At just 11 years old, Ryan won an amateur singing contest at the Valencia Theater in San Francisco, setting the stage for a successful career. By the age of 20, she married writer-comedian Tim Ryan, forming a popular vaudeville team. Together, they created the Dumb Dora routine, reminiscent of George Burns and Gracie Allen's acts, gaining popularity in numerous short comedies produced by educational pictures between 1935 and 1937. Despite their eventual divorce in 1942, Ryan opted to retain the surname, further propelling her career. Following her divorce, Ryan pursued multiple opportunities in Hollywood. She toured with Bob Hope, graced radio programs, and landed minor roles in several movies during the 1940s and early 1950s. Joining the cast of The Jack Carson Show on CBS Radio in 1946, she displayed her versatility as a neighborhood storekeeper. As television emerged, so did Ryan's appearances. She debuted on The Danny Thomas Show, followed by stints on The Real McCoys, My Three Sons, and Bringing Up Buddy. By 1966, she ventured onto the game show circuit with Password. Unfortunately, Ryan's lifelong struggle with smoking led to serious health complications later in life. Diagnosed with glioblastoma, an aggressive brain tumor, after suffering a stroke during a theater performance in 1973, she passed away on April 26 at St. John's Hospital in Santa Monica, California. Fellow Beverly Hillbillies cast members grieved the sudden loss of their cherished colleague, remembering her vivacious energy and impactful performances. One well, them fellas ain't nothing but a bunch of playboys, just like bees flitting from flower to flower, grabbing up the honey. Born in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Nancy Culp grew up as the only child of Robert Tilden and Marjorie C. Snyder Culp. Her father was a traveling salesman, and her mother was first a school teacher, then a principal. The family moved from Mifflin Town, Pennsylvania to Miami, Florida before 1935. Culp attended Florida State College for Women, earning a bachelor's degree in journalism in 1943. She furthered her studies at the University of Miami, working toward a master's degree in English and French. During her college years, she joined the P.I. Beta Phi sorority. As a young adult, Culp worked as a feature writer for the Miami Beach Tropics newspaper. There, she wrote profiles on famous personalities like Clark Gable and the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. This experience foreshadowed the versatile career she would build in entertainment and media. Later, Culp found fame playing Miss Jane Hathaway, the efficient and intelligent secretary to Milburn Drysdale, the banker in the Beverly Hillbillies. Airing from 1962 to 1971, the popular TV series propelled Culp to stardom due to her excellent comedic timing and lovable character. After the Beverly Hillbillies, Culp continued to entertain audiences through her work as a writer and comedian. Although she lost a congressional bid in an unusual turn of events, facing off against her former co-star buddy Epson, Culp remained committed to serving others. Upon leaving politics behind, she dedicated herself to helping numerous charitable organizations. Despite being diagnosed with cancer in 1990, Culp approached her battle with strength and determination. Sadly, she passed away on February 3, 1991, at the age of 69. Still remembered fondly today, Culp's contributions extend far beyond her iconic performance in the Beverly Hillbillies. Enriching countless lives with laughter and kindness, her story remains a heartening reminder of one person's capacity to make a difference. Reflecting on her life, we can appreciate how Nancy Culp embraced every opportunity to learn and grow while inspiring others along the way. Owning and a walk in the floor. <laughs> the poor old fella is past the point where Lynn. B. Benadorette, a beloved figure in American entertainment, 
began her professional journey in the golden age of radio. With her distinct vocal talents and knack for portraying diverse characters, she quickly gained popularity as a go-to voiceover artist for Warner Brothers animated cartoons. In fact, she lent her voice to many popular female characters during this era. Later, Benadurat transitioned smoothly to television, becoming a familiar face on the small screen. From 1950 to 1958, she starred alongside the George Burns and Gracie Allen show, garnering two Emmy Award nominations for Best Supporting Actress. This stint further cemented her reputation as a talented comedian and actress. As the 1960s rolled around, Benadurat enjoyed a fruitful TV career, securing recurring roles in several hit shows like The Beverly Hillbillies. She excelled in every role she played, thanks to her impeccable comic timing and natural charisma. However, her most memorable performance remains her work as Kate Bradley in Petticoat Junction, which endeared her to countless fans across America. Tragically, Benadurat received devastating news regarding her health during a routine medical exam in 1963. Doctors detected a malignant tumor in her lung. Despite the grim diagnosis, she opted to postpone life-saving surgery until after completing her commitments to Petticoat Junction. Tragically, Benadurat lost her battle against lung cancer on October 13, 1968, just a few short years after receiving her fateful diagnosis. Compounding the grief surrounding her passing, her husband Eugene Tumbley died unexpectedly four days later due to a massive heart attack. His demise occurred mere hours after attending his wife's memorial service. Their untimely deaths shook both their families and friends, leaving behind a palpable sense of emptiness in the worlds of entertainment and far beyond. Show me. No, my secretary will show you. Oh, she's in town. Raymond Thomas Bailey, known for his role as the greedy banker Milburn Drysdale in the beloved TV series The Beverly Hillbillies, started his career on the esteemed Broadway stage before making his way to the big screen and eventually television. With his knack for capturing audiences' attention, Bailey quickly made a name for himself in Hollywood. However, it was his role as Mr. Drysdale that truly solidified Bailey's status as a household name. As the Clampett family's financial advisor, Bailey's character often clashed with their lack of sophistication, providing plenty of laughs along the way. The show, which aired from 1962 to 1971, centered around the Clampett's adjustment to their newfound wealth amidst the glitz and glamour of Beverly Hills. Throughout the series, viewers saw Bailey's impeccable comedic timing and range as an actor. His interactions with the lovably unsophisticated clan, including patriarch Jed Clampett, served as the backbone of many hilarious moments throughout the show's run. Despite Bailey's success on the Beverly Hillbillies, his career extended far beyond this singular role. Throughout his tenure in show business, he appeared in numerous other projects, highlighting his versatility as a performer. Tragically, near the end of the Beverly Hillbillies run, Bailey began displaying symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. This insidious illness slowly stole the once quick-witted actor's abilities, ultimately leading to his retirement from the industry in 1975. Despite the limitations imposed by Alzheimer's, Bailey persevered, making a few more movie appearances before his untimely death due to a heart attack in 1980. He was just 75 years old. During his final years, Bailey maintained contact with some of his colleagues, including actress Nancy Culp, who starred alongside him in the Beverly Hillbillies. Her presence offered a comforting link to his illustrious past, even as dementia claimed larger portions of his memory. Indeed, Raymond Thomas Bailey's story serves as a poignant reminder of how fleeting fame can be and the devastating impact of degenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. Oh, Dean famous from Oxford to your Ricky Spring. <laughs> In 1962, a new television series named The Beverly Hillbillies made its debut. This classic comedy followed the story of a poor Ozarks family who struck it rich after discovering oil on their land. Suddenly finding themselves millionaires, the Clampett family moved to Beverly Hills, California, where they encountered a whole new world of wealth and privilege. This groundbreaking show was significant because it offered audiences a unique blend of humor and social commentary. By placing a backwoods family in the midst of high society, the creators of the Beverly Hillbillies were able to satirize both rural and urban cultures. At the same time, the show became a cultural phenomenon, attracting millions of viewers each week and becoming one of the most popular shows of the decade. Despite being over half a century old, the Beverly Hillbillies remains a beloved piece of American pop culture. Its timeless humor and relatable characters have helped it stand the test of time 
making it just as enjoyable today as it was when it first aired. Whether you're a fan of classic television or simply looking for something fun and lighthearted to watch, The Beverly Hillbillies is definitely worth checking out. <laughs> Budding actress Donna Douglas caught the eye of producer Paul Henning during her guest appearance on CBS's The Twilight Zone. He believes she had the perfect blend of innocence and country charm for the role of Ellie Mae Clampett in his upcoming sitcom, The Beverly Hillbillies. Meanwhile, Max Bear Jr., son of boxing champion Max Bear Sr., initially struggled to break into acting due to typecasting from his father's fame. However, after numerous small roles, he finally landed the part of Jethro Bodine when casting director Ethel Winant saw potential in him beyond being just another pretty face. Casting Irene Ryan as Daisy Moses proved challenging because they needed someone who could balance Granny's feistiness with warmth. After seeing over 200 hopefuls, Ryan stood out for her ability to seamlessly slip into character while maintaining comedic timing. At 65 years old, she brought experience and depth to the show. Earlier, Henning considered veteran vaudeville performer Raymond Hatton for the part of Jed Clampett, but eventually went with veteran film star Bach White. Unfortunately, White fell ill before production began, forcing them back to square one. Enter actor Buddy Ebsen, known for his work in films like Breakfast at Tiffany's. He became the iconic patriarch we know today. Nancy Culp joined the cast as bank secretary Jane Hathaway, following successful stints in Broadway productions and supporting roles in Hollywood films. Her sophisticated demeanor contrasted nicely with the rough around the edges hillbillies. Interestingly enough, Several actors were chosen based on recommendations rather than formal auditions, including B. Benadurette as Cousin Pearl, Harriet McJibbon as Mr. Strysdale, and Frank Nelson as Mr. Bickley. Their established careers added credibility to the new series. During rehearsals, it soon became clear that the ensemble gelled exceptionally well together, creating a unique dynamic that would become integral to the success of the Beverly Hillbillies. We lack interest or capability or intelligence. Above all, you mustn't let this... The Beverly Hillbillies, a popular 1962 TV series, was brought to life by director Paul Henning. With a background in radio and television writing, Henning approached the show with a focus on character-driven humor and relatable situations. He drew inspiration from American folklore and the comic strip Lyle Abner, blending them with his own comedic style. Henning aimed to create a timeless comedy that would appeal to a wide audience. To achieve this, he used a combination of slapstick and situational humor, often pitting the naive hillbilly family against the sophisticated world of Beverly Hills. This contrast allowed for humorous clashes and highlighted the warmth and simplicity of rural values. Collaboration played a key role in Henning's directorial process. He worked closely with the cast and crew, fostering a positive and creative environment. Actors like Buddy Ebsen, who portrayed Jed Clampett, have credited Henning with allowing them to develop their characters organically, contributing to the show's authenticity and charm. Visually, Henning favored a straightforward filming style that placed emphasis on performances and dialogue. He utilized set design and costumes to visually distinguish between the two worlds depicted in the series, the rustic cabin and the luxurious mansion. These elements helped establish the show's unique identity and contributed to its lasting success. Come on now, shake hands. Ready? You started off. Come on. Let's journey back to 1962, when the popular TV series The Beverly Hillbillies made its debut. The show was known for its unique set designs, memorable locations, and the logistical challenges faced during production. One notable aspect of the production was the creation of the Clampett family mansion. Set designers built a stunning two-story home filled with elegant furniture, chandeliers, and artwork. However, the interior didn't match the exterior, it was just a facade. When viewers saw the mansion's grand entrance, they had no idea that behind it lay a small soundstage. Filming also took place on location, including scenes shot at the iconic 20th Century Fox Studios in Los Angeles. Yet, transporting cast and crew along with equipment posed significant difficulties. To tackle these issues, producers relied on clever planning and organization, ensuring everything ran smoothly despite frequent changes in scenery. As for groundbreaking technology, the Beverly Hillbillies wasn't shy of innovation. Producers used then state-of-the-art videotape recorders for editing purposes. This enabled them to review footage instantly, making adjustments swiftly and efficiently. 
Although common today, this technique revolutionized television production during the early 1960s. Despite various hurdles, the Beverly Hillbillies became a massive success thanks to creative problem solving and cutting edge technology. Its lasting impact continues to resonate, leaving us all with fond memories of this classic American sitcom. Wear this? <laughs> the creation of the musical score and soundtrack for the Beverly Hillbillies was overseen by legendary composer Max Steiner. Known for his work on films like Gone with the Wind, Steiner brought a wealth of experience to the task. He aimed to compose music that would enhance the show's comedic elements while also reflecting its warm-heartedness. Steiner chose bluegrass and country tunes to underscore the hillbilly roots of the Clampett family. These genres were integral to setting the scene of their humble beginnings in the Ozarks. Fiddles, banjos, and acoustic guitars feature prominently, creating a lively and rustic atmosphere. One notable piece from the series is the theme song, The Ballad of Jed Clampett. Composed by Paul Henning and sung by Flat and Scruggs, it became an instant hit upon release. Its upbeat tempo perfectly encapsulates the fish-out-of-water storyline, making it memorable for audiences even today. Interestingly, actual recordings from the time period were used rather than studio productions. This decision added authenticity, allowing viewers to feel immersed in the era depicted on screen. Authentic instruments played by skilled musicians contributed significantly to this effect. When asked about his approach, Steiner stated, Music must serve the story I try to create something unique, yet fitting for each project. For the Beverly Hillbillies, he successfully achieved this goal, crafting a soundtrack deeply intertwined with the narrative arc and emotional tone of the series. I am fun. Who are you talking to? <laughs> One of the most iconic scenes in the Beverly Hillbillies is the opening credit sequence, where the Clampett family strikes oil on their land and becomes overnight millionaires. The scene combines slapstick humor with stunning visuals. The explosion of dirt and oil is both funny and impressive, setting the tone for the rest of the show. Director Richard Horf uses quick cuts and close-ups to emphasize the chaos and excitement of the moment while composer Perry Botkin Jr.'s banjo-heavy theme song adds to the hillbilly aesthetic. Another memorable scene occurs in the first episode when the Clampets arrive in Beverly Hills and mistake a swanky mansion for a hotel. Actor Buddy Ebsen, who plays Jed Clampett, recalled the shooting of this scene fondly we had a ball doing it. We just played it straight, which made it even funnier. Cinematographer Kenneth Peach used wide shots and natural lighting to highlight the contrast between the rural Clampett family and the luxurious surroundings, creating a fish-out-of-water effect that would become a staple of the series. The scene where Granny serves her famous coon chili to Mr. Drysdale, the banker trying to win over the Clampett's business, also stands out. Granny insists that the secret ingredient is raccoon meat, much to Drysdale's horror. This scene highlights the clash of cultures between the country bumpkins and the city slickers, as well as Granny's stubbornness and refusal to conform to upper-class norms. Actress Irene Ryan received critical acclaim for her portrayal of Granny, earning two Emmy nominations during the show's run. Overall, the Beverly Hillbillies relied heavily on physical comedy, cultural clashes, and exaggerated stereotypes to create its signature brand of humor. While some critics dismissed the show as lowbrow entertainment, it resonated with audiences and became one of the highest rated programs of the 1960s. Its influence can still be seen today in modern sitcoms that explore similar themes of culture shock and class conflict. Damn. Well, not as a rule, no. Oh, I can come down another way. Watch this. The Beverly Hillbillies, a popular TV series that first aired in 1962, left a significant cultural and social imprint that continues to influence modern society. This show, which followed the lives of a rural family who struck it rich, and moved to Beverly Hills resonated deeply with its audience due to its unique blend of humor, satire, and relatable characters. By poking fun at both rural and urban stereotypes, the Beverly Hillbillies created a shared experience for viewers, allowing them to laugh together despite their differences. The series played a crucial role in shaping American television by introducing working-class values into mainstream media. At the time, many shows focused exclusively on upper-middle-class families, but the Beverly Hillbillies broke away from this norm, focusing instead on the down-to-earth charm of the Clampett clan. Audiences found themselves captivated by the fish-out-of-water antics of Jed, Granny, Ellie Mae, and Jethro. 
as they navigated their newfound wealth amidst the glitz and glamour of high society. Moreover, the Beverly Hillbillies tackled various societal issues through its clever storytelling. One notable example can be seen in episodes addressing environmentalism, where the Clampett's unrefined way is often clashed with the more sophisticated, yet sometimes hypocritical, attitudes of the wealthy elite. In doing so, these narratives encourage reflection upon the value of nature and conservation, prompting viewer engagement in pressing ecological debates. Additionally, the show had a profound effect on fashion trends during the mid-20th century. With her iconic attire, Ellie Mae became an unexpected style inspiration for young women across America. Her preference for practical yet feminine clothing challenged traditional Hollywood beauty standards, empowering fans to embrace their individuality and personal sense of style. As a result, the Beverly Hillbillies transcended mere entertainment, leaving behind lasting memories etched into our collective consciousness. To this day, reruns continue airing around the globe, delighting generations of viewers while serving as testaments to the power of comedy and satire in reflecting and influencing our ever-evolving cultural landscape. Jar him loose. You can't hardly blame Mr. Drysdale for trying to get shit of a critter like that. The Beverly Hillbillies, a sitcom that premiered in 1962, was met with mixed reviews from critics but found immense popularity among audiences. The show followed the Clampett family, who struck oil, and moved from their rural home to Beverly Hills. Some critics praised the humor and unique premise of the show. A review in Variety magazine described it as a pleasant surprise with consistent gags. The review also noted that the actors' performances were excellent, particularly Buddy Ebsen as Jed Clampett. However, other critics were less favorable. Jack Gould of the New York Times wrote that the show was as empty as television comedy can get. He criticized the stereotypical portrayal of hillbillies and the lack of sophisticated humor. Despite the mixed reviews, the Beverly Hillbillies became one of the most popular shows on television during its nine-season run. At its peak, it drew over 50 million viewers per week. The show's success led to merchandising deals, including board games and toy cars modeled after the Clampett family's truck. The Beverly Hillbillies also earned several award nominations. In 1963, the show was nominated for two Emmy Awards Outstanding Comedy Series, an outstanding performance by an actress in a supporting role in a comedy. While the show didn't win either category, the nominations themselves were a testament to its popularity and cultural impact. Overall, the critical reception of the Beverly Hillbillies was divided, but its massive popularity and commercial success cannot be denied. The show left an indelible mark on American culture and remains a beloved classic today. It's directly. <laughs> During the filming of the Beverly Hillbillies, the chemistry between the actors was undeniable. Buddy Ebsen, who played Jed Clampett, became like a father figure to both Max Baer Jr., who played Jethro, and Donna Douglas, who played Ellie Mae. He would often invite them over for dinner, and even gave Douglas etiquette lessons to help her prepare for her role as a wealthy socialite. The show's set design was also noteworthy. The mansion where the Clampets lived was actually a real house located in Beverly Hills. However, the interior shots were filmed on a soundstage, which allowed the designers to create some truly unique rooms, including a massive stone fireplace that took up an entire wall. One episode required the crew to build a functioning oil derrick on the studio lot. This proved to be quite a challenge, as they had never attempted anything like it before. But after weeks of planning and construction, they finally succeeded, creating an impressive structure that reached several stories high. Despite the show's success, tensions sometimes ran high behind the scenes. Paul Henning, the creator and producer, could be demanding and particular about every detail. He once made the entire cast redo a scene because he didn't like the way one actor had adjusted his hat. But through it all, the cast remained close-knit and supportive of each other. They would often play practical jokes on each other, such as hiding props or playing music loudly during takes. These antics helped keep morale high and created a fun atmosphere on set. Overall, the making of the Beverly Hillbillies was filled with challenges, camaraderie, and creativity. From the elaborate sets to the unforgettable performances, it remains a beloved piece of television history. They can sing in? Well, I used to. I mean, I used to sing a lot myself in college musicals, amateur theater. The Beverly Hillbillies, a groundbreaking 1962 TV series, holds a unique place in film history. This show brought rural comedy into American homes every week, paving the way for similar programs.
Its success led networks to explore new genres and formats, reshaping television's landscape. Paul Henning, creator of the Beverly Hillbillies, later developed another successful sitcom, Green Acres. Both shows shared a common theme, fish out of water amidst wealth, influencing other productions like The Jeffersons and The Nanny. The iconic Clampett family also made their mark beyond television. They appeared in various media, including comic books, merchandise, and even a movie adaptation in 1993. Despite mixed reviews, the film demonstrated the franchise's enduring appeal. Moreover, the Beverly Hillbillies played a role in launching Buddy Epson's career. After his stint as Jed Clampett, he starred in another hit series, Barnaby Jones. Additionally, Donna Douglas, who portrayed Ellie Mae, became a children's book author post-Hillbillies. Despite being over half a century old, the Beverly Hillbillies remains relevant today. Elements of its humor can still be seen in modern comedies, proving its timelessness. Furthermore, it serves as a reminder of television's evolution since the early 1960s. So while we may chuckle at some aspects today, let us appreciate how this humble sitcom shaped our present entertainment scene. <laughs> Did you know that the Beverly Hillbillies first aired over 60 years ago? This classic TV show still holds a special place in many hearts. We'd love to hear about your personal connections to this iconic series. How did the program influence your view of cinema, or what memorable moments can you recall from watching it? Maybe you chuckled at Jed Clampett's down-home wisdom, or admired Ellie Mae's independent spirit. Or perhaps you remember tuning in each week with family or friends, creating cherished traditions around this unique show. As we explore timeless classics like the Beverly Hillbillies, your stories help us understand why these films continue resonating through generations, so don't hesitate. Share your favorite anecdotes below. And while you're here, please consider engaging further by liking, sharing, and even subscribing for future deep dives into movie history. Together, let's celebrate the power of cinema and its lasting impact on our lives. What's that got to do with it? What's that got to do with being friendly? Nothing, I just thought about